This is a series on how to use Origin to make AI-powered applications in the real world. To make things interesting, I have put in three restrictions on myself. First, we can only use open source models like Mistral or Llama 2. People say it's impossible to use anything but GPD-4 and we're gonna prove them all wrong. Second, I will explain each and every line of code I write. I mean, not every line, but you get the point. We will be dissecting everything Autogen does under the hood so that we always know what's going on. Third, the entire video will be structured in a way so that you can achieve the same results in your project. And yes, that means all the code I write will be available on GitHub. Why do I do this to myself? All right, today we will use natural language to query Kubernetes. Let's get started. First things first, all our code is gonna be in Python. Blah. We've got no other option, guys. I'll be using poetry and I've already added all the libraries that we are gonna need. Over to our code base, we are first going to make an instance of our external system adapter. In our case, that's Kubernetes. Let's head over to its definition. Think of this class as an abstraction for your external system. It could be Kubernetes, a database, or even an external API. It doesn't really matter. Next, we have a get resources method which retrieves data from our external system. For now, we are retrieving Kubernetes resources like pods or deployments. But again, this could literally do anything you want. Anything. As you can see, this method accepts a few parameters to do its job. If you don't know what the API version or kind is, that's all right, because that's pretty much the point. We're gonna let AI worry about figuring out the values for these parameters. And you can put in any parameters you want. For example, if you were using a database, you could simply accept a SQL query as a parameter and the AI generate the query for you. Lastly, notice this function returns a string. You always want to return a string. For now, we are simply returning done to shut down Autogen. Don't worry. We will be discussing how you can efficiently store data and pass it around between agents in subsequent videos. For now, we will simply shut down. Let's move on to the autogen side of things. We first create the base LLM config object. We use this to configure all our AI agents. The first thing we configure is the base URL of our inference server. We are using the Mistral Orca model, which is hosted using a custom inference server. So, open source models struggle when it comes to calling functions. That's probably the biggest reason people suggest using GPT-4 with Autogen. I wrote my own inference server on top of Llama CPP to try and address this issue. I won't be explaining the server in this video, but it's all open source and I've made sure I include the guide to setting all of this up in the description below. Back to our code base, we will set a couple of more things like preventing the model from using a cache and setting a response timeout. The last thing we set is the temperature, which people refer to as the creativity of the model. This controls how innovative or novel its responses will be. But that also means that it could potentially spit out complete garbage. In our case, we just want our AI to run our function. So don't you act smart, just do your job and that's it. Man, why does saying that out feel so good? Next, we create our Kubernetes engineer agent. This agent is responsible to call our function. The most important thing we do here is telling the agent a little bit more about the function it needs to run for us. We do this by simply describing the signature of the method as a JSON schema object. Quick note, make sure you make a copy of the LLM config before we set this. Adding it to the global config directly would unnecessarily confuse the other agents which have nothing to do with the function call. We then create the system message. This defines the role of the agent. For the Kubernetes engineer, we want the system prompt to nudge the agent towards calling our function. We can now create the agent by giving it a unique name, passing the system message and the LLM config. We also pass our function as a dictionary and finally, we provide it a termination message handler. The termination message function is called after the agent has generated a response. This is where we tell Autogen to shut down once we encounter the text done. I simply love this functionality. 
For example, we could reply with done if our function executed successfully, but reply with an error message to let the agents continue to try and fix the problem. Okay, so next we create the Kubernetes expert agent. This agent will be responsible to figure out or research the values that should be passed to our function. This helps reduce some of the cognitive load from our engineer agent. When working with Origin, you'll notice that some agents just cannot do their jobs well. No amount of prompt engineering can really help in this scenario. This problem just escalates when working with smaller models like Mistral. This is a good indication that you may need to break down your job into smaller tasks. Like in our case, the expert will figure out the function parameters while the engineer will simply call the function. So we write a system message to make it do just that. I also had to include the output format to make sure that it works as expected. This is the prompt engineering part. The next question is figuring out how we can give these agents some work to do. That's where the user proxy agent comes in. This guy is a substitute for an actual human. We can use it to supply the initial prompt or implement more complex human and loop scenarios. So here's where I create the user proxy agent. The implementation isn't all that different. Just make sure we use the user proxy agent class instead of the assistant agent one. Also, we will disable the human input mode because we want our system to work autonomously. We now have our worker agents ready to go. But how do we make them coordinate? We could force them to talk in sequence. As in the user agent will call the expert first and then we take its response and pass it to our engineer. But now, where's the fun in that? Moreover, as our app grows and offers more and more functionality, we might end up requiring multiple custom workflows based on the prompt. That's a lot of hard work. So why not let AI decide the sequence? That's where our next agent, the group chat manager, comes in. This is how we can stitch it all up. Just remember, we need to make sure that all three of our agents are part of this group chat. All that remains is to get a prompt from the user and initiate a chat. That kickstarts our AI workflow. Before we execute our code, let's understand how Autogen runs all of this under the hood. And to be clear, this is just the tip of the iceberg. We will be exploring how to integrate Autogen with our existing apps and use it for way more advanced use cases. So make sure you're subscribed. This is how it works. The user agent initiates the chat by passing the message to the group chat manager. The group chat manager hits our inference server, which is running our model, with the user prompt along with a system message. The system message is where the magic happens. The message goes something like this. Hey, I've got three agents with the following roles. The user is going to ask you a question. Keeping in mind that we need to find the best answer for the user, Pick a role best suited to continue this conversation. Yeah, it's literally treating it like a role-playing game. The model will respond with a role which it thinks is more suitable. Hopefully in our case, it will be the Kubernetes expert. Hit pause for a second. In some cases, the model may decide the wrong role. If that happens with you, you may want to augment the user prompt with a bit of a nudge to point the model in the right direction. Like in our example, I've augmented the user prompt with something like this. Moving on, the group chat manager will forward the user's prompt over to the Kubernetes expert. The expert will hit the model again with its system message along with the user's prompt. At this point, the model should reply with the parameter values needed to make the function call. This response goes back to the group chat manager, which will once again ask the model on who comes next. But this time, it will include the response from the expert. Now the model knows that we have the necessary parameter values, so it decides to select the engineer as the next role. The group chat manager now passes the user's prompt along with the expert's response to the Kubernetes engineer agent. The engineer makes one final call to the model. It will include all the necessary context along with the details of the functions available to it. At this point, the model makes the decision to call the function. The engineer, like a good little kid that it is, calls the function. And since our function returns the string done, our multi-agent system gracefully exits. And just like that, our agents work as a perfect team. Man, these guys are doing a way better job than us. Let's run our code to make sure that things are indeed working. The user agent talks to the expert, then the engineer. We decide to make the call. 
And there's our response. For some reason, Origin omits the part of the group chat manager from the logs. But hey, who am I to complain? Do drop a comment on what you would like to see next. Until then, check out this video which uses machine learning to scale applications running in Kubernetes. Like, share and subscribe if you found this video to be helpful. And don't forget, I am your tech bud here on YouTube and hopefully in real life.